due to the nature of the services that I provide for Pandventure as a company, I come in contact with a lot of people. And oftentimes I realize that we are so much more interesting as human beings besides the fountain pen hobby. So join me in this video, which is not about fountain pens, and I will show you some details regarding my life. Welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Amy from Penventure. Welcome to another video in the Not About Fountain Pens series. And in this one, I'm gonna strive to touch as little as possible this subject right here. Anyway, I come from a family of three uh, siblings. So I'm the first born and I have another brother and another sister. As I was a child, I was raised in the Northern part of Romania still here. I do remember that I was very, very interested as a child regarding watches. I do remember uh, going out with my mom and I was uh, looking at the counters in the watch store and uh, I said that I will want to own a wristwatch when I will get my first money, I will buy one. Till then, my mom uh, bought me a lot of watches and uh, some of them I still have today. I collected a few watches, nothing super, super big as a collection and all of that, but I do have some Casio watches, G-Shocks, I do have an Atlantic, which was a uh, mechanical movement, and uh, I do have a Zeppelin, I do have uh, an Orient, I do have a Seiko, and one of my most uh, expensive watches in my collection, I don't have it today, but I think you've seen it in a few of my other videos from past years. It's a Frank Mueller Black Cortez Conquistador. It's a beautiful watch. Um, I, I like it a lot. In regards of watches, I do look forward at one point in life owning a Rolex because I want to have a iconic watch that I can wear all day. Like for example, a Submariner with a black dial with a black a uh, bezel, something that it's gonna fit with everything that you are wearing at that point. And for a man, there isn't too many accessories that you can use, like for example, a pen, a lighter, if you're a smoker, but I'm not. If you have a watch, that can tie everything far better. So I look forward to getting a Rolex Submariner. I don't yet decide it which is gonna be the milestone that I need to pass in order to reward myself with such a purchase. But anyway, I look forward at one moment, I will decide uh, when and uh, what will be the situation in which I'm gonna get that watch. And possibly I'm gonna share the experience with you all. Besides this, I do remember myself growing uh, a little bit further down the road and uh, I started um, pretty much going into sports. And I used to play hockey and I used to play basketball. To be honest, as a basketball player, I wasn't that shabby, although I'm not super, super tall. Anyway, I played for a local team and I still have um, some pictures. I do hope I'm gonna find them. And if I'm gonna find them, you will see them attached someplace and uh, don't laugh. It was me back in the day, so everyone has that shameful picture of yours. I'm gonna use some of them uh, that I have, and uh, don't laugh, that was me back in the day when I was uh, into sports and all of that. Moving further, I started to find an interest in uh, motorcycles. I was young, I was like 15. I started into motorcycles, and I bought my first bike at around 15, 16 years old. And that passion, because I call it a passion because back then it was a passion. I love them, I still love them today. And I'm just glancing my eyes towards something very interesting. I'm gonna let you know in a few moments. But anyway, check this picture. So this is me on a bike, which, and you probably you're gonna find the picture attached, but I, I I'm watching this picture and I am just laughing all day because look at me, I had this gorgeous hair and this childish face. 
yeah, it was back in the day when I was to just simply close the door to the home and take my helmet, take my gear, take my friends and just ride through the hills. Uh, we are staying in the north part of the country and here we are very close to the mountains and there are a lot of roads which are uh, clear, not that circulated, not that much traffic and we used to just simply go and grind our tires and uh, all day, all day it was the same. So I had a lot of fun. Uh, I did had a few accidents and I just said I need to cool down, chill down because I'm going to hurt myself really bad. So I put a stop on it. To be honest, I still look forward at getting a Ducati Diavel motorcycle from Italy because I love Italy and it's supposed to be an Italian bike and I look forward at one point again rewarding myself with such a purchase. But anyway, I don't have set, like in the case of the watch, I don't have set a milestone, something that I need to achieve in order to do that. At one point, it will be the time for such a toy to say so, because we had uh, a saying among us, men don't grow up. Actually, only the size and the value of the toys are gonna increase as they move forward in life. And in my case, the toys remained rather small like this pen and others but yeah it got more expensive <laughs> uh, moving forward from that point well um, as i put down that sort of um, lifestyle to sale because it was pretty much a lifestyle riding so much like myself i was like mm, okay i need to do some school because yeah we all need education i started to go to college and in college I studied, if I remember correctly, uh, my section was, and I'm gonna translate it as it is, international affairs. And under this big umbrella to say so, I studied marketing, I studied banks, financial system, uh, statistics, um, accounting, pretty much everything that has to do with business. I come from a family which has a business established sometime in, I believe, 93. And uh, I seen my father work a lot and uh, I was grown into the company of my father. So I have picked up a lot of uh, traits uh, that I later used in my life as being a person in charge of a company. So going to uh, economical university, I think it was the best step to go forward with. So I finished school and after that, I came back into my father's company because all of the years of college, uh, when I had uh, time off from school, I would have come into his company and worked for, for him. And I started from being a mechanic in the garage. I took then a seat of taking care of a gas station and I worked with numbers and pretty much a lot of uh, things that has to do with stock and inventory. Then I moved forward and uh, became a fleet manager because my father has a transport company and uh, we used to transport uh, shipping containers with a fleet of trucks and uh, I was uh, just at the office being a fleet manager, I was in contact with the company that was offering transport uh, services and the driver. So I was the middleman. I was supposed to take the information from that company and pass them over to our drivers and assist our drivers, give them address, directions, uh, resolve problems. So there is where I developed a lot of my skills that are to do with uh, talking with a lot of people, uh, understanding situations, bad days, good days, family problems, pretty much everything. So from that uh, perspective, I started to just simply think that I need to do something on my own. So I talked with my father and uh, I actually took responsibility and I said, I need a loan and I want to start my own company. And this is when I was 21 years old. At that age, I wouldn't knew that many things that I know today, but I wanted to do something different. So I said to him, I need a loan and I want to do something in transport business, but not in the same uh, market or area like you do. And I had a few meetings with some ports 
and some companies that are working closely with ports and I signed some contracts and I started my business eight months after uh, the point of me getting into a talk with my father and asking for a loan from him. And I learned a very, very valuable lesson once I started to have uh, my own company, my own employees, and I grown to understand the responsibility of a person in charge um, that has to offer a lot of people different assurances, wages, to understand every situation and to mediate in between the company that is offering the transport services, the drivers, my accountant, pretty much everyone. So from when I was 21 years old, roughly around, I believe, eight to nine years, I spent growing that business. And uh, it was an awesome ride. I learned a lot of things. I grown to find that I was working in an environment that I don't felt that comfortable. And it was a lot of stress and it still is. And uh, I just said, I think I wanna pursue something else. Also in this time, I managed to stumble upon fountain pens again, because throughout these years when I was in school, I still was looking often about having writing instruments beside me. So I used to have fountain pens from first grade uh, until college, after college, pretty much every single time you would see me with a fountain pen. And it was something like this, maybe this Waterman, which I still own today. And I have a lot of memories tied to this specific fountain pen and many others. I stumbled upon the um, community of fountain pens and I started to go into that direction. And I said, this is the kind of people that I want to be in contact with every single day. Anyway, let's move forward because this is not about fountain pens. This is about everything else besides fountain pens. Some of my other actions and things that I enjoy doing is also riding mountain bikes. And I do this often. I do own a e-bike. I do own a downhill bike. I do own, pretty much I do own a bike for every single scenario. <laughs> I, if I want to, go down a mountain, I have a bike. If I want to go up a mountain, I have a bike. If I want to cruise, I have a bike. Pretty much I have a bike for everything. And uh, it's just funny because it's the same like with fountain pass. I do have one for each specific time. If I want to go fancy, if I want to impress someone, if I want to go practical, I do have a specific pen or a specific option for that uh, situation. Anyway. I do love going out uh, with my friends and riding bikes and uh, it's, it, it's an awesome uh, exercise and uh, I, I just love it. Since we're talking exercise, I do have a pretty good record throughout my life. I don't have that much consistency, but I was into sports at a young age and it holded me up until even now because I do go to gym like three days per week. I still do a lot of uh, things as uh, going out, walking, riding bikes, uh, doing cardio and so on. And I do believe it is a very, very good thing. And I do encourage you a lot to do exercise. And I think this is a magical thing that you can do for yourself right now as an investment for the later years. So be motivated strap some uh, headphones on, put your favorite song, get out, walk, enjoy, see the outside, and for sure the quality of your life is gonna improve. Since this is about exercise, I feel like I need to say that I am a person that I believe in balance. So I do spend a lot of time uh, reading books is another passion of mine. I do have a lot of books. I read books about anthropology, about a business, about mythology, stoicism, and recently about this wonderful, wonderful thing. This is my first Kindle. And my God, this is a rabbit hole of its own. I just love this thing and it's with me ever since I got it and I am buying books and reading books left and right every single day. So books is another very, very good way to train your mind. 
I don't know if you have time or not, but make time for reading a book or two or how many do you want because we all have time. If you are in the metro station, if you're traveling someplace, uh, stop watching at your phone every single time. So take a book and read because it will help you a lot. And for me, I read in English because it helps me to develop my vocabulary and to be more articulated with the way I talk in front of the camera. So this is a bonus as well. Reading books, staying a lot of time in front of the PC, my eyes were hurting. So I got into a new rabbit hole, sunglasses and prescription glasses. This new pair is from a place in Italy that I stumbled upon when I was at the Visconti convention. I was on my phone looking to get a pair of prescription glasses that I've seen into a movie, the Dita 006. And uh, those glasses are the same glasses that Tony Stark used in Avengers, the Edith glasses, because I'm a huge Marvel fan, but let's not get into that because I'm a nerd. And when I was in Italy, I said, I'm gonna find a place in Florence where they are selling products from the Dita brand. And I stumbled upon Bottega di Squardia. My God, my God, it's a huge rabbit hole. This is the second pair that I got because the other ones I sent back for some minor adjustments. To be honest, I just love these tools to say so because my eyes are feeling so much better. And also they are slowly, slowly catching up to me because I come to realize they are the same level of seriousness and details like a fine writing instrument. You will see that the craftsmanship that goes into creating this prescription glasses is insane. We're talking about titanium materials, techniques, and it's just slowly, slowly growing on me. And I do love the fact that I can add some style to the tools that I use to feel better as a human being to perform better. If you are interested to acquire such a piece like this or anything, and if you're passing through Florence, they do have a store. They have multiple, multiple pieces of very interesting eyewear that you can try on. I'm gonna leave you a link down below. You can check their website. I do have pretty much a ton of other things that I enjoy doing, but they don't come up right now in front of the camera because this is the sort of video uh, that I record live and I don't have a script or I don't have anything. For now, this is what I want to share with you. You've seen a lot of pictures or not that many. I will see how much I can find in my phone from the old days that are not that awkward and I feel comfortable sharing them with you all. This is me in a nutshell, me besides fountain pens and I'm pretty sure you out there have awesome stories because I came in contact with a lot of them. And I have to say that I have the best people, the best audience, and I do enjoy that I can very, very easy connect with an individual that I'm talking if we share a passion, regardless if it's fountain pens, if it's something else, if we share the, the, the concept of having a passion for an object, for a thing, for, I don't know, for anything, I can connect with that human being at a very, very deep level. And this is uh, very, very uh, brilliant to say so. And I do appreciate that throughout these years, I was in contact with a lot of brilliant people, which I adore, and I can call it as a privilege to have them as friends. You all. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this more of a exotic content of mine, give it a thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to support the growth of PenVenture, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, just click there, turn on the notification bell on, and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Speaking about content, if you want to continue watching my videos, click here and enjoy. As always, I'm your host, Amy from PenVenture. I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye.